Do you know where what you buy or wear or eat comes from? Do you know whose hands what you've bought has passed through? Do you think about it? Do you care? Now, I'm a consumer, just like everyone else. I buy things, I wear things, I eat things. But these are questions that have plagued me for a really long time. Why? Well, I work in very large and very complex organisations, the uh, ones that are generally held to task over everything they do or don't do. And it's uh, my role to work across these organisations and their supply chains to reduce their impact on the environment and the communities in which they operate. So basically, I'm a professional sustainability person. The good news is that so many of us want to buy sustainable goods. We want to know that the people who made our clothes were paid fairly and that the environment wasn't harmed in producing the food we eat. In fact, 66% of us even say we're willing to pay more for sustainable goods. And of course, you and I want to know that what we've bought was sourced sustainably. But how do we know this? Well, we need to ask a whole bunch of very important and valid questions. There's just one teeny tiny problem. The supply chains of everything we buy are really, really complex. I know this because it's my job to collect the data and look at it from all the way through the process. It's incredibly important work, but I've got to tell you, it's not easy. Let me give you an example. Okay, so here, this is a cake. So for you, this might look like celebratory goodness. For me, this is a source of potentially unsustainable palm oil. Now, palm oil, as I'm sure many of you know, has been linked to pretty horrible farming practices and the destruction of the orangutan habitat when not produced sustainably. So this cake, it's a minefield when it comes to thinking about whether or not it's sustainable. So, let's start with the cake. Is there oil in it? Is it palm oil? If it's 8% by weight, how much oil got in the cake? The cream layers, has that got palm oil in it as well or did that fall below the reportable threshold? The icing, so our manufacturer, they get that from another manufacturer. Oh, and they've just changed their manufacturer. So, did the new manufacturer get the briefing from us on the palm oil? For the palm oil that we know about, is it sustainable? Is it certified and to what method? And oh, do we have the certificates on file? Are they chocolate sprinkles on the cake? Are you kidding me? Did the supplier include the data from the sprinkles in what they gave us? I'm gonna have to go and ring them. And so it goes on. In this example alone, just on whether or not the palm oil is sustainable, there's about 30 data points. Oh, you want to know like the conditions of the factory or whether it's vegan, GMO free, organic, free range? Well, you're going to need a whole lot more data points. All this from one really valid question. So why is it that this is a question we should be asking? Well, we have a reported 40.3 million people in some form of modern slavery in the supply chains of the products we buy. It's estimated that 71% of them are women. And we are in the midst of the sixth great extinction, the Anthropocene or age of humans, because it's us that's having the impact. This is not okay. The data that I collect, it's a person, it's a habitat. I've got to tell you, sometimes you can't see that through the spreadsheets, but I really, I can't lose sight of this because it's my analysis of this data that enables a company to make a more sustainable decision. But sometimes companies don't have the visibility that they need. So whether it's through limitations of information or ignorance or sometimes deliberate avoidance, and this lack of transparency, it's a huge problem for everyone. In fact, in a study done last year, which was a global study, 54% of the manufacturers surveyed said they had no visibility into their supply chain and sustainability-related risks. So we've got a bit of a problem, a really big gap. But what if there was a better way? What if there was a way we could get faster and more accurate data to help us solve these supply chain issues? 
What if I could open up my cupboard and scan everything in there and get a full suite of information about what was there from who made it, where it was from, the country of origin, the greenhouse gas emissions along the supply chain, the conditions of the factory? What if technology could help us solve and crack the sustainability code? Well, industry is actually beginning to deploy this type of technology, so it enables people like me to more readily act on the information I've received. So blockchain, combined with mobile and smart tags, has been used to trace tuna provided to restaurants in Japan. Blockchain has also been used to verify fair pay to workers for a thousand coconuts. What if we could actually train our supply chains to self-check or to identify where there was a gap or an anomaly in the sustainability data? What if we could audit continuously rather than just at a point in time? What if we could combine machine learning as an application of artificial intelligence and blockchain to not just identify and trace, but to validate and assure that the right thing from raw material to finished product was done correctly all the way through the process. I believe, and it's my firm belief, that it's going to be this type of data and, and accelerated process through blockchain, digital technology and signatures, and artificial intelligence is going to be crucial in enabling us to collect the data to eradicate the issues I mentioned earlier. And we shouldn't be shying away from this. We should embrace it because sustainability affects us all. And so we all need to fight. It's your fight as consumers to ask where what you've bought has come from and challenge the answers that you're given. It's the corporate fight to work with like-minded suppliers who are galvanised towards making these changes. And it's my fight to continue to pour through those wretched spreadsheets today and analysing and grinding the data with a firm eye on the technology of tomorrow. And this should give you a resounding sense of hope that there are solutions that by challenging the status quo, thinking creatively and changing our mindset about how things have always been done, that we can adopt new and exciting ways to change the game on how we conduct ourselves as corporates and consumers across an increasingly smaller world. Thank you.